Here, I just want to show what kind of bearings um, I've been using. I've seen references to these called spherical bearings, but what it is is a self-centering bearing. You can put this in here and you can see that... Um, just a little bit of stuff there. That this can swivel like this. Reason is, is because if you have one on one end and one on the other end, they don't have to be 100% perfectly in alignment. You put this through, bolt it down, and then you have a, a bearing. So it has a small amount of rotation there. This is what the uh, lower shaft was connected to. Okay. <clears throat> this is just one of my prototype um, translation plates. This would have been the upper mechanism. This kind of rotates like that. Um, the other one that I want to show you is this is something that I was using and you can see in this focus see a certain amount of swivel so I've already been using these bearings from the beginning because they're easy to get they're cheap and it's basically a self-centering bearing and if you see it from the other side here you can see it has a certain amount of swivel action there so I wasn't using it as a self-centering bearing, but so that um, you can rotate some uh, rotate something where the bearing had some angle to give. But that's a self-centering bearing. Now what I want to show is um, one of the methods that I was using to create a minor um, elliptical orbit, and I think it's simpler than a Skinner method is that what happens when you have a circle and let's say it's driven off of a, a, a belt or a motor right here when you have a circle and you tip it this way you now have an elliptical shape now I'm not talking about elliptical shape of this because by tipping this obviously it's still a circle right but what happens when you take a wheel and you tilt it slightly, like if you're looking at it like that, and you tilt it like this, from the top, you have an elliptical orbit that this is going to trace. So if you have this in here, okay, and you want to drive the lower shaft in an elliptical orbit, what you do is you tilt, you tilt this at a few degrees, and when this is rotating like this, this will trace an elliptical orbit and it's the easiest way to create an elliptical orbit from a ro rotary motion because it's all about frames of reference so when you're looking at the frame of reference for this as this is spinning around regardless of the angle it's always going it's always circular but if you want to look at the frame of reference to what this is doing if you see because this can this can tilt back and forth like this right See that has that much play. I want one that has quite a bit more to where you'd be able to turn this at 45 degrees. See, but there's not enough give there, but it does give you me a couple couple degrees tilt. So when you have this tilted at a couple degrees, and this keeps rotating like this, this is rotating in the elliptical orbit. So Arto, if you're seeing this, I think you know what I'm talking about. Maybe you can draw up the diagram that shows it. But any circle tipped, that point will follow an elliptical orbit in the horizontal plane. I'm not talking about the plane of the wheel itself, which is always going to be circular, but the horizontal plane that um, is tracing an elliptical orbit. So anyway, I just wanted to show that because if we have a bearing, a self-centering bearing, which has, you know, quite a bit more angle than that, and you have this 
mounted, this would have to come through enough to make up the difference between the tilt. So if this is tilted, for example, like this, well, the distance between the lowest part of the bearing and the highest part of the bearing, you would have to have this be able to come through here. And as it rotates around like this, see from top view, is following an elliptical orbit. So that's how to turn rotary motion from its own plane to an elliptical orbit on a separate plane, the horizontal plane. So maybe Arto will be kind enough to draw a diagram of what, what I'm explaining here and we'll post that on the forum. This is a simple demo of converting rotary motion in one plane, circular motion in one plane, to elliptical motion in a different plane. All I have to do is tilt the wheel, and from a top view, it's elliptical. So if this is the lower shaft on the Skinner machine, so if this is the shaft on the Skinner machine, whatever wheel you're using to rotate it will be in a bearing that's able to swivel like this, and also lets it slide up and down this right here. So as it's rotating, what you want to do is make sure that, I mean this is just the concept that I'm moving towards uh, eventually in final form, is that when it's at the peak here, at the top of the wheel that's rotating it in elliptical motion, that this is no more higher than the wheel because what you want to do is mount some type of spoke that will catch onto this shaft and that's what's going to support it. Otherwise, if this is coming, if this is too, too big out here, like this, when it comes around, it's obviously going to hit the shaft right here. Okay, so you have to consider all those. So as it's rotating, like this, what's happening from the top view is that this is actually going in an ellipse, while this on this slanted plane is going in a perfect circle. Okay, so now. As this is rotating, you can obviously put the count, uh, the weight right here, which will lead to this, okay, but each time this gets to the narrow end of the ellipse, this end and this end, I would not have the motor running constantly because you don't need it. As it comes right here, you give a pulse to the motor, which will turn it this way, that momentum will carry, and then as it gets to this end, other end of the ellipse, then it's pulsed again. So I'd only pulse the motor every 180 degrees. Even if you had magnets around this wheel, you could run it basically like a Bedini SG, and that would be sufficient to be able to um, run a mechanism like this. So anyway, this just demonstrates rotary on this plane is elliptical in the horizontal plane. Because if you look at it from a top view, if you bring the camera over here and look straight down, As this is going like this, this is actually going in an elliptical, in a long ellipse this way. And as it comes back this way, it's tracing an elliptical pattern. Like this. So hopefully that will let everybody understand the concept of what I'm moving towards. So anyway, thanks for watching.